Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Um, just a couple background slides to follow up on the intro. Um, we are based in Racine, have been for 100 years, but we're global. Um, as you can see from the top map, we have locations around the world. The blue dots are distribution locations, and we have manufacturing locations throughout Europe, North America, and Asia. And if you add in our dealers and our customers in that bottom map, we really do span the globe. And the last map you heard in the introduction, our, our most recent acquisition brought our sales back to a 50-50 split between what we sell in North America and what we sell around the world. Just a quick overview of our products, because this will help as I get in uh, to the details of, of my talk. Our products are not automotive. Um, we're lucky if we produce anything in the hundreds, let alone thousands. Most of what we sell of a particular model is in that dozens category. So we are, in essence, a giant job shop. Whether it's marine products for offshore, that's an example of the VET product line that we just acquired in the Netherlands, azimuth thrusters uh, for much larger vessels, transmission systems for um, oil and gas completion, ARF, all-wheel drive, fire trucks, and then the industrial, which spans a host of agriculture um, and construction type applications. So this is difficult. Uh, I've given talks on leadership style and questions on leadership, but I'll be honest, it's been for high schools, colleges, and grade schools. So um, I grabbed a couple slides um, from those presentations. Um, and really, Leadership is hard to talk about, it's hard to fake, it's who you are. Um, and so just talking about the leadership style that I think I have, and it's a combination of things that focus on the team. You know, it's, it's coaching, it's strategic, um, it's compassionate, and it's always focused on the team. A lot of people like to think that they're transformational leadership, that happens very infrequently. A lot of what happens in leadership is day-to-day -day improvement, making what you do better, and focusing on the team and teamwork. We're only as good as the team. I know I'm, I'm stating the obvious. And I continue to focus on the team. And really my job in that CEO role, and I think the others would agree, it's focusing on what we're missing or what could get in the way. Uh, that didn't, didn't work out so well. I'm sorry that didn't transport in. But one of the best quotes that I have on leadership comes from General McChrystal. And it's gardeners plant and harvest, but more than anything they tend. Plants are watered, beds are fertilized, and weeds are removed. So as I move into my grade school presentation, I like to use the visual of being a pilot. You take off, you know you have some place to go, you don't know where it's gonna be. It can be scary for people, but if you show them what to measure and have, keep them, let them have faith in where you're going is the right path, um, things tend to work out. But you, again, a leader has to sit there and measure, communicate why, what, why we're doing what's important, what we have to change to get to our goal. The other one I like to use for students is you're that meerkat on the hill, always looking for the danger or what we're missing, that what could affect our business, what could affect our plan going forward. So just a quick comment on our culture, communication, and learning at TwinDisc. Right or wrong, and many of you in this room are in the same boat, um, we're 100 years old, we've always been headquartered in the Midwest. The Midwestern values and ethics dominate in our, in our culture. We've gone through in Twin Disc and, and many of you in this room, histories of deep cycles where reinvention is the only way to come out of them. If you go back 50 years, our biggest customers, two biggest were easily Fiat Alice and Caterpillar. Today, Fiat Alice for us doesn't exist and Caterpillar has vertically integrated almost everything we sell to them, so we only sell them spare parts. We've had to reinvent, find new customers um, for our technology. Our communication style and the one that we've developed over time, it's open and regular. Uh, we have, for those of you who've been to our headquarters in Racine, we only have one room that has a carpet, and that's the boardroom. Every office, every other meeting room has tiled floors, and that's to foster open communication. So guys from the shop floor, gals from the shop floor, they're free to knock on anyone's office if they have an issue and come in and have a meeting. Just quickly on, uh, I don't know if that's... I'm sorry, no, I can't go back here. Yeah, one of the things that I, the visual, and a lot of you understand in culture and being entrenched, um, a lot of it's like the angular momentum of a wheel, and you have to figure out how to tweak it to get things to move and to change. So innovation is something that we're striving at, and, and I just gave a talk in Racine 
about the difference between innovation and invention. I think a lot of times people are focusing on big inventions when a lot of what we do, particularly at TwinDisk, is innovation. It's implying technology that we've developed in one area into a different area, or quite honestly, seeing technology that others have developed and applying it to what we do. But more and more, what we're seeing, and I'm sure a lot of you are seeing, is that innovation and the need to innovate and reinvent yourself is coming faster and faster and faster, and it is very hard to rely completely on everyone that's internal. It's a team sport. It's something that everyone has to embrace in the company. It's okay to fail, to take risks. I'm a firm believer that really you only learn from your mistakes and how to do things better and to move on and learn from them and keep going. So my approach to communication and the culture at the company is I know I'm not the, I know I'm not the smartest person in any room at any given time, so I don't pretend to be. There's always something that I can learn from our employees, our customers, on what we could do to make their job easier, to make our product better, and more importantly, to make our customers' product better in the marketplace. So increasingly, what I'm seeing, and we had a talk about this last night, in the electrification of the automobile industry, hybrid, EV, we see that across our markets. That is absolutely going to happen. The problem is we're not a Toyota or a Honda. It's gonna be hundreds of applications and solutions for different customers. So it's gonna be a team event um, for all of us to solve that. So quickly talking about the biggest mistake, I hope you let me over uh, for a few seconds, but it's really something related to everyone, a people mistake. My, when my youngest daughter was born, I literally had to leave the next day for a board meeting in Europe. And it wasn't the easiest birth. Um, and I didn't raise my hand and say, I really can't go. I made the same mistake as the CEO, not forcing, but not letting someone out of a board meeting. Uh, and he had to miss uh, a, a big event with his child. Um, those two things really got to me because I didn't need to be at the board meeting in Europe. He didn't need to be at the board meeting. So recently when we had a board meeting in Europe and a confirmation change for our CFO's triplets and he had to be back in Milwaukee, um, it was an easy decision to let him stay and be with his family where he needed to be. Things like that don't come around very often. Um, opportunity for somebody else to step up, for me to step up and do more of his part of the presentation, but it was a great learning experience for all of us and quite frankly, if, if our employees who are our core or the team aren't happy and aren't satisfied, um, we won't succeed. So, uh, thank you.